Monmouth University holds a Spring Awakenings concert, a new internet flaw puts users at risk, and the new Boy Meets World spinoff released its first trailer. Stay tuned for all this and more on Hawk TV News. Hello and welcome to another edition of Hawk TV News. I'm Alex Apollonia. And I'm Michael Idea Kumar. Monmouth University Center for the Arts and Department of Music and Theater held a Spring Awakenings concert to celebrate the return of spring. This was an evening full of artists' responses to spring over the past three centuries through music and poetry. The concert featured classical performances by several soloists and the Monmouth University Chorus and Orchestra. The event was held in Pollock Theater on April 17th at 7.30 p.m. On April 21st, the Corporate and Public Communication Graduate Program will be sponsoring a trivia night to benefit Relay for Life. The event will start at 7 p.m. and be held on the third level of the MAC. The trivia night will feature superhero questions, Mammoth trivia, and a few other categories. Students can participate for, by themselves for $5 or form a team of five for $20. The reg to register for trivia night, contact Stephanie Eichmeyer at S0969304 at mammoth.edu and if you follow the corporate and public relay team on Twitter at CPC Relay Team MU, you can receive one dollar off your admission fee. The inauguration of Monmouth University, University's eighth president, Dr. Paul R. Brown, was held on April 10th. My co-host Alex Apollonia has the story. Today marks an important day in the history of Monmouth University. We are celebrating the inauguration of our 8th president, Dr. Paul Brown, a respected academic leader and renowned scholar. Professors, alumni, and students came to honor President Brown in this inaugural celebration. So thus today we formally celebrate a change in leadership in the spirit of stewarding Monmouth University to greater heights as we mark our 80th year as an institution of higher education. Am I smiling? Uh, I just am a little overwhelmed. It just feels wonderful to have this much support. Yes, we just, on all fronts, just, you heard me say, a bigger and bolder, bolder, bigger, stronger, brighter, just lots of visibility for Mama. This event is crazy. Like, everything's so beautiful. There was so much work put into it. It's incredible to see everything come together. I feel so special to be here and, like, a part of it because there's just so much going on. Well, it's really nice when we get a new president. He's coming from um, a different place. He's got different credentials and experiences than the previous one. Previous one was good, but now he brings a new look, a new vision. And we're very interested to hear what he's got in mind. There's a strategic plan process that's going on right now that'll bring changes to the university in ways that we don't know yet. So everybody's giving feedback and getting involved in that to be part of that process. We're in a very competitive industry. I have to keep price at a reasonable level. I have to keep value up in terms of what you can do with the degree. I have to make sure you're safe. I worry about all those things. That's a big challenge when you have 6,000 students uh, spread out on a campus. I only have one daughter, but I feel like I have 6,000 kids. <laughs> There were over 600 attendees at the inauguration of President Brown, and it was truly an honor to be a part of it. I'm Alex Apollonia for Hawk TV News. Thanks, Alex. Monmouth University held a fundraiser walk, Heart of the Lion, in hopes to raise money for the Christopher Mejia Memorial Scholarship. The walk was held on April 13th from 9.30 to noon at Monmouth, Monmouth's Kester Field, where students, families, and friends gathered to support this ca great cause. Mejia was a business student and fraternity brother here on campus who tra tragically passed away last year. Members of Sigma Pi coordinated the walk in honor of the loss of their brother, of their brother, excuse me. Senior and fraternity big brother of Mejia, Jason Horowitz, came up with the idea in hopes of promoting this special scholarship to all business students. He explained that the endowment would be awarded to a worthy business student who has the special attributes Chris possessed. To find out more about the memorial scholarship or to apply to be a potential recipient, visit the website on your screen. On April 18th, Monmouth University's Honor School will host a special screening of Money for Nothing Inside the Federal Reserve, a documentary about the reserve's impact on, uh, on our economy and society. The screening will take place at 11.30 a.m. in Pollock Theater. This event is free and open to the public. There will be a question and answer session immediately following with the opportunity to meet the film's director, Jim Bruce. 
For those of you watching a repeat broadcast, Hawk TV News will have more on this event next show. Monmouth University's Shadow Public Relations Firm and Public Relations Student Society of America held its first dance-a-thon on April 4th. Br Brittany Chapina was there. Thanks guys, I'm here in Anacon Hall in the Rebecca Stafford Student Center for the first annual Mammoth Hawk Stands Together. Mammoth Hawk Stands Thon is teaming up with Shadow P Public Relations and PRSSA here at Mammoth University to raise money for the Valerie Fund. All the proceeds go towards raising money for kids with cancer. Let's go check it out. We're really excited right now. It's just started, but we have a great turnout. We really think that we're going to hit our $10,000 goal. We're up to like $7,000 right now, and we have a lot of ways to raise money during the night, so we're really confident that we're going to get a great turnout and a great amount of money raised. We have a campaigns class and a special events class on campus um, under the communication department in the journalism PR cluster. And within that, it's pretty much a whole year of planning. Well, I was really excited to support this event because I actually have a family member, not an immediate family member, but a cousin's son, who has been a recipient of the services that the Valerie Fund uh, offers. I'm here because I'm a patient at the Valerie Center. I actually got diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma last May. And um, I went through about a year of treatment. And um, over the last six months, I've been whittling down my treatment, and I've been cancer-free for almost seven months now. And then coming in August, my treatment's going to be over, and I'm going to be uh, completely cancer-free from that point on. As you can see, it was such a great night here in Anacon Hall. A lot of people came out and danced for such a good cause. Can't wait for next year. I'm Brittany Chapina for Hawk TV News. Back to the desk. Thanks, Brittany. According to a recent poll conducted by Monmouth University in Asbury Park, New Jersey residents are split on the idea of legalizing marijuana. This poll was created in response to the introduction of a marijuana legalization bill by State Senator Nick Sakari. This bill would allow people over the age of 21 to purchase small amounts of marijuana from state licensed businesses. Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute, said the results show that most people believe the use of alcohol and tobacco is more dangerous than marijuana. The poll shows that 36% of New Jersey residents agree with the bill, 45% do not, and 18% have no opinion. Due, due to the high pollen count and the delayed start to spring, those who suffer from asthma are in danger of breathing, of breathing difficulties this season. According to Dr. Andrew Ting, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics, Pulmonary, and Critical Care at the Mount Sinai, Sinai Hospital in New York City, asthmatics with sensitive, sensitivities to tree pollen are using more rescue inhalers and steroids. To control asthma and allergies, Ting suggests visiting your doctor, taking antihistamines, showering, and changing into a different outfit, outfit after being outside to help symptoms. He also recommends inhaled and nasal steroids and allergy shots. Most importantly, Ting stretches, stresses that preparation is key to get through the season. Well, Alex, I for one, I for one are, I'm always terrorized by allergies and all that when spring mm -hmm. comes around. So, and especially due to this, this, this weather that we've had, it's, it's crazy. It's because of the climate change now that there's the excess amount of pollen, so that's affecting uh, a lot of people. For me, I usually don't typically get allergies, but I feel like for this season, I'm having you know, the scratchy throat, the coughing, so it's not easy. But We will now take a short break. Stay tuned for more Hawk TV news after these messages. Odds of becoming an astronaut, 1 in 13,200,000. Odds of being struck by lightning, 1 in 576,000. Odds of dating a supermodel, 1 in 88,000. Odds of bowling a perfect game, 1 in 11,500. Odds of being trapped in an elevator, 1 in 24,528. Odds of catching a ball at a major league game, 1 in 563. Odds of an injury from shaving, 1 in 6,585. Odds of tripping while texting, 1 in 10. Odds of getting cancer in your lifetime, 1 in 2 men, 1 in 3 women. It's up to us to change the odds for our generation. For the ones we love. For our future. If you don't like the odds, stand up. Stand up to cancer. Did you do anything right? Time. Shut up! Don't tell me to shut up. I'll shut you up. You let ain't go going anywhere. I said let go! Let go! Don't tell me what to do. Give me that. No, okay, okay. Stop Please telling don't. me what to do!
Oh my god, how much fun was last night? I can't wait to see what we get into tonight. How the heck did we end up at that stripper's joint? We had at least two or three more drinks. And it was all free because that guy was buying. We were totally wasted after that. I mean, like, drink after drink. And they just kept. I've already called off everyone tonight, and nobody's picking up their phone. Ugh, what's wrong with you people? I hope nobody died. Welcome back to Hawk TV News. On April 5th, the Fire and Ice Festival was held at Mamas Resident Quad. Marissa Cornford had the story. Hi, I'm here at the Fire and Ice Festival where all things hot and cold are about to collide in this fun-filled event. Let's go check it out. SAB actually reached out to us um, a couple months ago and they asked if there was anything that we'd want to um, try to like donate um, to the event today. And um, we had always wanted to pair up with SAB because we're two of the biggest um, programming organizations on campus. So um, once they asked, we just said, what do you need done? How much do you want? And we came to this agreement, so we just went for it. I'm actually a member of SAB and RHA, so I figured I'd help out and show my support for my school. Well, there's so much. Like, it has a good balance of fire and ice. I saw the ice cream and the snow globe things, so I couldn't resist that, so that really brought me here. And I saw there's a lot of other cool things here too, so. Just a lot of, like something to do today, which that really brought me out here. SAB and RHA are on fire with this great event. Nothing to put them on thin ice. I'm Marissa Cordford reporting for Hawk TV News. Thanks, Marissa. A new internet bug could be putting your information at risk. The new security flaw has been named the Hardly bug, which is a security breach in the open source encryption software OpenSSL. This software flaw works as an information leak revealing personal information, such as credit card numbers, emails, and passwords. OpenSSL is used in two-thirds of web servers and affects popular sites like Amazon, Google, and Yahoo. Software researchers discovered the bug on April 7th and are taking action to get rid of the security flaw. The researchers suggested that all internet users take caution and change passwords to all accounts, including banking, email, and social media. Italian cryptographer Filippo Valsorda created the Heartbleed Test program for users to check what sites have been exposed, exposed to the bug. However, researchers said it may take years until the Heartbleed bug is fully exterminated. Supermodel Giselle Bunchen revealed that she was targeted by the IRS because she is the highest paid model according to Forbes magazine. It was also listed that from June 2012 to June 2013, she made $42 million working for companies like H&M and Chanel. As a result of the article, the IRS is auditing Bunchen. She has made it clear in an interview with a Brazilian magazine that what matters more than money is her family and happiness. The first Girl Meets World trailer is officially out. Girl Meets World is the new Disney television series spinoff of the hit 90s sitcom Boys, Boy Meets World. In the, in the series, the main characters from Boy Meets World, Topanga and Cory, are all grown up and married. They have a daughter named Riley who is trying to, trying to discover the world for herself. Girl Meets World is seen through Riley's perspective. The 30-second trailer does not reveal much, but the theme of innocence is clearly there. There are rumors that other original cast members from Boy Meets World will make appearances in this new series. Like I gotta say, I'm really excited for this sitcom. I grew up watching this, so to see how it's really going to develop and kind of go from here is really exciting. See, I've never really watched the show when I was younger, but I obviously knew the popularity. It's still talked about now, like the old mm -hmm. show amongst people uh, like around our age. I think show. it's gonna be pretty big. No, I'm excited for it. Me too. <laughs> we now go to Nash Wiener with more TV talk. Nash? Welcome to another edition of TV Talk. The big news coming out of the television world happened on April 2nd. David Letterman and Paul Schaefer announced that in a year, they will be retiring. Letterman, who's been on television for 32 years, started the whole late night franchise and also started The Late Show on CBS. Letterman, who is currently 67 years old, will leave a strong legacy behind him and anyone succeeding him will have big shoes to follow. But then, later on, on April 10th, CBS announced that they have found a new host. Former Daily Show correspondent and current host of The Colbert Report, Stephen Colbert will take over for Letterman when he retires. Colbert has a loyal fan following and fans go crazy for him. The only thing everyone is wondering is whether Colbert will be playing the character he so popularly made famous or will he just be himself? But all signs are pointing to him just being as normal everyday Stephen Colbert and shying away from the character he created. But people are worried about it. But I have to say that I'm not worried about it at all. Colbert is a funny man and has great ideas. He's going to give the new king of late night, Jimmy Fallon, a big run for his money. 
Now let's take a look back at last week's Nielsen ratings. The top rated show, and the show that's been on top for a while, was The Big Bang Theory. People love this show. Who wouldn't? It has to be one of the funniest shows I've ever seen, and I'm sure CBS loves having them as a show. And the second and third shows went to NCIS, the NCIS series. Number two was NCIS, and number three was NCIS Los Angeles. All the NCISs do so well in the ratings. And with as long as they've been on TV, people would think that the ratings would be going down. Well, that's the complete opposite. The ratings are only getting higher every week. And I think that the thing people love about it is that if you miss an episode, it's really no big deal. You can just watch the next episode without feeling behind. So if you want to watch a show that gives you that feeling, then you should start watching NCIS. Well, that's all I have for TV Talk this week. Back to you guys at the desk. We now send it over to Fabiana Bontemple with the latest in entertainment news. Welcome back to your one and only place for Celeb Dirt. For those who are big fans of the redneck reality hit Duck Dynasty, you may need to reconsider your weekly reality guilty pleasure. It seems that the show's season five finale really took a bad nosedive in the ratings. Season five seemed to be in good standing when its season premiere brought in 8.5 million viewers. However, despite the series' cult following, the popular reality show only brought in an audience of 6 million viewers. This number, unfortunately, seems to be the lowest rated finale for the smash hit since its first season. And the fifth season was the first full season since family patriarch Phil Robertson made some anti-gay comments in an interview with GQ. Hmm, could this possibly be a reason for the low ratings? As pictures have been circulating, I'm sure we can all agree that baby Prince George has to be one of the cutest babies ever with those adorable chubby cheeks. As rumors were swirling that mommy Kate Middleton was pregnant with maybe a little brother or a sister for George, the rumors were quickly squashed and don't seem to be true. However, someone who is pregnant is our girl, Nicole, a.k.a. Snooki Polizzi. It looks like another baby meatball is on the way for the soon-to-be newlyweds, Snooki and Gianni. A big congrats to the couple. Now, a serious throwback moment here. A trailer has recently been released online for a Teenage Mutant Turtles remake movie. The Michael Bay produced film will star actress Megan Fox, alongside Will Arnett, Whoopi Goldberg, and Saturday Night's Abby Elliott. For those who have yet seen it, head over to E! Online for a peek at the anticipated trailer. Well, that's all I have now for your celeb buzz. Back to you guys at the desk. We will now take another short break. Stay tuned for your mom's sports update. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. All right, Commissioner, hold on, I'll tell him. Honey, it's Phil. The gold reserve is being attacked. Tell him I'll be right there. What's a joke? What's so funny? Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Let's get a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. All those boys are much too much. Tick, 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 massive heat waves, heat waves, tick, severe droughts, tick, 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 devastating, devastating hurricanes, tick, 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 our future. Is up tick, tick. to you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Welcome back. The path to the Stanley Cup will be a little easier for the New York Rangers come playoff time. On April 10th, New York clinched home ice advantage in the first round 
of the playoffs after a two to one win over Buffalo. The Blue Shirts, who sit in second place in the Metropolitan Division, finished the regular season on April 12th in Montreal. The NHL playoffs started April 16th. And what is becoming the norm this offseason in the NFL, yet another player is being investigated for off-the-field antics. On April 10th, TMZ reported that San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick and two other NFL players were being investigated for, for an alleged sexual assault that occurred on April 1st. Kaepernick has maintained his innocence, calling the TMZ report completely wrong. Police are investigating, but have said there is no evidence that a sexual assault has occurred. For our Mama Sports updates, we go to Andrew Byrne. How are the Hawks doing this week, Andrew? Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Sports Talk. It's been a frustrating start for the Mammoth baseball team as 10 games into MAC play, they are still trying to play at a consistent level. In their latest game on April 13th, the Hawks were blanked 2-0 by the Manhattan Jaspers. Chris McKenna threw six innings and allowed two runs, but the Mammoth bats were held silent as they collected just six hits. Tab to finish second in the MAC, MU sits in fifth place at 5-5 five and five on the season. They will try to return to the win column when they play Fairleigh Dickinson in a non-conference game on April 16th. For the Monmouth softball team, the losses are beginning to pile up. On April 13th, MU was swept by Fairfield in a doubleheader. In game one, the Hawks fell 10-2. Katie Schumacher had two hits, but Sidney Underhill had a rough day on the mound, yielding 10 runs in five and a third innings. In game two, the Hawks fell 9-8 despite three hits and an RBI from freshman sensation Rachel Schatzbarger, who had been arguably the Hawks' best hitter all season. The Blue and White have now lost five of six games on the year to fall to 10-15 on the season. Finally, let's check in on both the Monmouth men and women's lacrosse teams. For the men, it's been a rough go for their first season in school history. After yet another loss, this time an 11-6 setback against Manhattan, the club stands at 0-11 on the season. They have just two games left in their inaugural season to get that elusive first win in program history. As for the women, they slipped to 6-7 on the year after falling to Drexel on April 12th, 9-6. Allison Stathius had a goal and an assist in the loss, while Stephanie Anderson scored two goals. The Hawks are back in action on April 16th when they host Iona in a MAC showdown. Be sure to check out GoMUHawks.com for Hawks athletic updates and tune into the Extra Point every night at 6.30 when I and our team of experts provide the latest in Mammoth sports. Until the next time on Sports Talk, I'm Andrew Byrne. Now let's send it back to the desk. That's all for this edition of Hawk TV News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Day Kumar. And I'm Alex Apollonia. Be sure to tune in next time for another edition of Hawk TV News. Mm -hmm.